Thank you to Ecosia for sponsoring this video, more on them later. I've been in a bit of a gaming slump lately, and it's not a great feeling to have. Sometimes we just need that mental escape, and for me, video games have become my happy place, my rest and relaxation, and as I've loved to mention many times before, <laughs> it's one of my favorite forms of self-care. I play video games mostly for my me time, and yes, of course, there are other hobbies that I love as well, but I guess I just started to miss that feeling of excitement for every new game announcement or new releases, even staying up till midnight just so I can play a game as soon as it comes out. <laughs> but I do think it's normal to have ups and downs with anything. I also think we've just been super spoiled, especially in the world of cozy games, getting release after release and sometimes all in the same week or the same day. After what I'd consider to be the game that introduced cozy gaming to the whole world, <laughs> which is Animal Crossing New Horizons, when that came out, I noticed a shift in gaming where I think everyone finally recognized the need for these types of games. What I mean is there was a time when I only had Harvest Moon, now known as Story of Seasons, and Animal Crossing as my cozy games. Now there's something quite literally for everyone and different genres as well, not just farming and life sims. But I wonder, when does a lot become too much. I think with my ever-growing backlog and at the same time still wanting to keep up with every new release that I want to play or cover on my channel, it gets to be overwhelming sometimes and I sort of start to chase that feeling of the feeling I got when I played Animal Crossing Wild World for the first time or Harvest Moon Friends of Mineral Town for the first time, for example. Of course, there are tons of other games that I can mention, but these two were maybe some of the first that really made an impact on me. So I keep wanting to find another game to fall in love with and become obsessed with and become my next memorable cozy game. The challenge though with doing that is I'm continuously comparing and figuring out what might be missing and how to make these games perfect instead of just enjoying them for what they are, if that makes sense. I guess it's somewhat unavoidable, especially as a gaming creator, but instead of just sticking to one or two games that I'm currently loving, I always have to set those aside to try a new release. And it might hold my attention for a while, but not for long. There are lots of exceptions too, of course. I'm not saying that this happens with every single game, and most of the games that I recommend are the ones that I do keep coming back to, but I'd eventually lose interest either because I just didn't like the game, maybe it was too similar to other ones that I've played, it's not quite living up to the hype, or more than likely there's another new release around the corner. What this does though is that I don't enjoy many games in its entirety, flaws and all. The choices almost become overwhelming for me, and instead of finding joy in these games, I started to avoid a lot of them just to avoid disappointment. <laughs> All of this to say that time is precious and when we're choosing to play a game, we're also choosing to set aside time for that hobby. So since our time isn't unlimited, if we're not enjoying it anymore, then we also have the choice to not continue it. I don't see the point in forcing something that isn't bringing me happiness anymore and I think that's what ultimately led me to this slump or gaming burnout. Don't feel too bad and feel the need to continue playing something for any other reason than having fun. You don't need to play a game just because it's the hottest new release or everybody else is playing it. So I figured out some ways that helped me out of my gaming burnout or slump and hopefully some of these things and tips and games will help you out as well if you're going through a similar thing. Your space directly affects your mental and even physical health and that's why when I don't make a conscious effort to clear my space or keep it my happy place, I can really feel it start to bring down my mood and energy levels. That's why I love to surround myself with warmth and coziness and my favorite things. Things that bring me joy and relaxation for as much 
much as possible. So like it's important to care for ourselves and our well-being, I think it's just as important to look after our surroundings and that includes our earth and the environment. Which brings us to today's sponsor, Ecosia. Ecosia creates simple ways for you to be climate active every day. It's a purpose-driven search engine that dedicates 100% of their profit to the environment. You can use it just like any other search engine while they do their own thing. How search engines usually earn their revenue is by displaying ads with your search results and you click on them. Instead of keeping that money to themselves for personal uses though, all of Ecosia's profits go towards climate action. They invest 20% in renewable energy, regenerative agriculture, and grassroots activism. The remaining 80% goes towards planting and protecting trees around the world. You can even see a live impact counter on their homepage which counts an estimate of how many trees the Ecosia community have helped Plant. The more you search, the more trees are planted. It feels nice to be making a difference even in a small way, and you can too by using a tool we already use daily. Thank you to Ecosia for sponsoring this portion of the video. Be climate active every day and install Ecosia on your desktop and mobile, and let's plant trees together. These are somewhat of prompts that helped me find some games that I wanted to play to get out of my gaming slump or burnout, but this list may look very different for you just depending on your own favorites or experiences since we all love different things and that's kind of the beauty of this hobby. Nostalgia is somewhat of a comfort place for me as well, not just in gaming but also in music and other tech or hobbies. My first tip is to play games that made you fall in love with gaming. Almost without fail, whenever I go back to games that are pretty much responsible for my love, of this hobby it never lets me down and there are lots of games that i could add to this list but lately i've been really into playing golden sun again i've mentioned this game throughout the years and it's pretty much the very first rpg i ever played on the game boy advance or at least the first one that i played to completion it left a really huge impression on me because i loved the story the characters the music the world lore everything i would replay it over and over again throughout the years, but very recently we just got it added to the Game Boy Advance library on Nintendo Switch Online, so it's been really fun revisiting it that way. It's just been much more convenient to play one of my all-time favorites whenever, wherever. If you love RPGs or you're looking for a new one to play and you love themes of magic and just a really great adventure, please add this to your list at least to try out. And if you're a member of Nintendo Switch Online Plus Expansion Pack, then you do have free access to it in the Game Boy Advance library. So there's no better time than now to try out this masterpiece. <laughs> Recently, I've come back to The Sims 4 as well. And I think I mentioned in one of my last videos of last year that I've actually been playing this franchise since the very first The Sims. And I remember just being able to create your character and to pretty much see myself in this virtual world living out my video game dreams. <laughs> It was mind blowing for me and fast forward to The Sims 4, there's just every expansion pack that you can think of, every mod that you can think of, it probably exists. So the customizations are endless. Even though I don't play the game as intended anymore, I usually just hop in and create a sim and build a house, decorate a house and forget about the game for another few weeks to a few months. <laughs> It's still always really fun to revisit the game again, and I usually do so when there's a new expansion pack. Just to see the new clothes and furniture and towns and little gameplay stories. And lastly, Animal Crossing New Leaf on the 3DS. While it wasn't my first Animal Crossing, I actually played Wild World on the DS. For my first Animal Crossing, New Leaf just holds a special place in my heart. New Horizons opened up so much in terms of customization for this game, but there's just a little extra magic in New Leaf that I don't quite get with New Horizons. Maybe it's the nostalgia, but I've seen a lot of other people online as well talk about the same thing. I personally can't pinpoint what it is, but I just love maybe acting as the mayor in the town, having the ordinances. I also love Main Street where you can see all your villagers new and 
old. <laughs> I also really love the addition of Welcome Amiibos, which are different characters that come in with their vans or trailers that have special decoration for you to use. That just has a bit more personality, I guess, and it also holds a lot of fond memories for me, so it's been nice revisiting it and just getting all the warm and fuzzies that I felt when I used to play this game. Play a new game, not necessarily brand new, but a game that you've never played before that you know is similar to your old favorites. What I mean by that is, instead of going back to your old favorites, like the ones that I mentioned for myself, find a new release or a game you've never tried before that have similar elements that you know you love. Mostly for a new story, which I think will get you excited to learn more and play more and discover more, while still feeling the nostalgia and invoking somewhat of a familiarity. Of course, the updated graphics and quality of life improvements bringing the game to modern day as well might help you out because I know personally, even going back to games that I used to love, sometimes you can tell by today's standards the controls or the camera might be a bit clunky compared to what we're now used to. So it might be nice to find something that's newer but similar to what you used to love. Coral Island does that a lot for me because I really feel like this is one of the new farming games that really captures a lot of what I loved with the original Harvest Moon Friends of Mineral Town or now Story of Seasons Friends of Mineral Town and Stardew Valley, which was inspired by the original Harvest Moon Friends of Mineral Town. You can tell that it was made by a group of people that really love the genre of farming and life sims and they incorporated a lot of what OG fans love with farming sims while adding a whole lot of their own. This one takes place on a gorgeous tropical island. It's inspired by a lot of Indonesian culture and lores. There are so many characters and they have so much personality. One of my favorites that I've personally played in modern farming sims. There's so much to do in this game as well and on that note, Cult of the Lamb is a game that I think will stay close to my heart for a very long time. It's a darker but still lighthearted and humorous take on an otherwise overdone genre of dungeon crawling and resource management and base building. They could have easily gone the totally cutesy route that lots of cozy games are doing these days, but they did their own thing and I think it really worked for them. It's a bit more horror, a bit more spooky, but still cute. And this little lamp is so endearing and just makes you want to root for him. <laughs> Play something that can let you shut off your mind. I don't know about you, but my mind runs a million miles a minute. And so even when playing simpler games, my only requirement is that it holds my attention. Something that makes me want to be present in the moment and just focus on what's in front of me. Fashion Dreamer is perfect for this because it doesn't really have any intricate story or world building. You're pretty much just thrown in and the main premise of the game is just putting outfits together. That's it. Of course, there's a bit about being a fashion influencer and you can also create your own showroom for your brand, but it's basically just putting cute outfits together and I love that. I can jump in and create one outfit or play this for hours and hours. Something like Cooking Mama as well, where it essentially handholds you through every step of the way and there's something satisfying about it just like Fashion Dreamer once you get to the end results of the full outfit or completing your dish. It's very simple and repetitive tasks that doesn't involve a lot of brain power, basically. You don't have to think too hard, you're just sort of going through the motions. I think it's super relaxing and super fun. Play cozy mysteries or puzzle games. Mysteries works wonders for me when I'm in any kind of slump. I think because it naturally makes you curious and want you to discover more. With each clue or puzzle, it gets you asking more and more questions and uncovering more secrets. Professor Layton is one of my favorite games to keep coming back to for this, and this might also fall in the category of nostalgia because I love the DS games in particular. I do wish that they bring over this entire series 
to the Switch as well, sort of like what they did with the Ace Attorney series. I love to pick up this game anytime that I want a cozy mystery or puzzle moment because it's very easy to play just one puzzle or two and before you know it, you're playing for the entire afternoon or evening. The difficulty level is quite balanced as well. There are some puzzles that you just breeze right through and there are others that might get you thinking a bit more and using up your hints more but it's just challenging enough to keep it fun without feeling frustrated. One of my favorites on Switch that I've mentioned a few times before as well is a little to the left and with this one there are also hints but there's less hand-holding in my opinion so you have to go through some trial and error before you figure out the solution to each puzzle but the nice thing is that if you are feeling particularly slumped you can also skip the puzzle and just come back to it later on but because of that i find it oh so extra satisfying once you do figure it out i really enjoy these types of games just depending on the mood it's somewhat the opposite of the last category that i mentioned where i just want to shut off my brain and do repetitive tasks that doesn't require me to think too much this one is more of like a brain game it gets you to problem solve it's a different kind of satisfaction play something that makes you feel all the feels something that ignites your soul and moves you something that just makes you feel things happy sad mad and everything in between I think when a game or a movie or a book has the power to move you, it's more likely to make you feel attached. It's just something that resonates more with you, so you're more likely to keep reading or watching and in this case keep playing. I've talked about Spirit Fair a lot on this channel already for years now, <laughs> so I'll talk about more recent favorites for this video, one of those being the space for the unbound. It's another game that really tugs on those heartstrings. It's a side-scrolling adventure that has a lot of story and touches on more sensitive topics like mental health and grief as well. I don't want to spoil the story because I think that's the best part about this game, but it's about these high school sweethearts and I just think it's wonderfully written and how it all unfolds leaves you in awe and keeps you wanting to play more. Another game that really tugged on my heartstrings is Venba. This game is pretty short, you can probably do it in one sitting, but you may want to keep replaying it because it's just, again, so wonderful. At first glance, it might look like just another cooking game and for a very long time I thought it was just another cooking game, so I set it aside for a while. It wasn't really at the top of my must plays when it first came out because there were so many games coming out around the time that Venba did, but I am so glad when I finally played it. It's about an immigrant family from India and it shows basically the hardships and challenges of moving to a new country and then raising a child in that new country. The sort of disconnect that happens between their child and their roots and finding a way to reconnect to that culture through cooking. There was a lot in the story that really resonated with me. I come from an immigrant family that moved from the Philippines to Canada and just like in East Indian culture, food is a huge part of our roots as well. It's a way to bond with your family, to pass down traditions and to connect with people in the community essentially. So this game took me on a journey to say the least and it left me really craving for more games or experiences that I felt playing this game. <laughs> Low stakes games or games that doesn't really involve a lot of skill investment. It might seem similar to the games where you can turn off your brain and do repetitive tasks, but the difference in this one is it's more story heavy. Games that are bordering into visual novels. One of my favorites in this category is Coffee Talk, and it's such a staple in any cozy gaming library in my opinion. This one has you playing as a barista for all beings and of course you get to make the different drinks, take their orders and play that role as well but for the most part you are listening to your customers stories and learning about them as they keep coming. Otome games come to mind for this as well. I haven't played one yet or read one but 
I would like to for my bookish friends who might be looking for, you know, a bridge between video games and reading. I would recommend checking out visual novels or otome games. Play a game where you can totally just lose yourself and be immersed in a familiar world. For this, do I even need to say more than Legend of Zelda Tears of the Kingdom? If you haven't played this game yet and you've played Breath of the Wild, what are you waiting for? <laughs> but if you've played neither, it would be nice to play Breath of the Wild first just to get an idea about the world and the lore, but you can technically jump straight into this one as well. I think it can stand alone in its own story and gameplay and it just takes everything that I loved about Breath of the Wild and continued to build up on it. I've already raved about this game in many videos, <laughs> so I won't spend as much time on it in this video, but basically a game like this one that can just let you explore and let you experience it how you want to experience it. It's an open world, there's not a linear story or linear path that you have to follow. If you want to do the main quests and progress the story, of course you're more than welcome to. If you just want to do side quests, you can also do that. If you want to just shrine hunt or look for Koroks, or my favorite thing of all, just running around aimlessly in Hyrule, finding treasure, foraging, cooking, just enjoying the sights <laughs> of all the video games I've ever played. This is definitely in my top three worlds that I'd be happy to lose myself in for hours and hours, and I have. <laughs> and now last, but most certainly not the least, especially in this list and for games that are solely responsible for pulling me out of my gaming slump or burnout, play a game that is completely totally outside of your comfort zone a game that you've never experienced anything like before i know especially with things like video games or even other hobbies again like books or movies and shows we like to stick to our favorite genre and that's totally fine it's not just a comfort thing but also just our preferences but in this case you may be pleasantly surprised i know I definitely was. And the game that I honestly can't run out of good things to say about is Baldur's Gate 3. <laughs> when I first started hearing about Baldur's Gate 3 when it came out last year, I already knew there was some sort of buzz around it. Of course, the old fans that have been waiting for it and lots of new fans as well. I was intrigued because I kept hearing the title come up a lot, but I'll be totally honest, I just had no idea what it even was. Even though people were talking about Baldur's Gate 3 this and Baldur's Gate 3 that, I didn't know what it was, I didn't know what it's about, and that's totally okay. It's outside of my radar because it's not the type of game that I would normally play. Outside of cozy games, you guys know that I love RPGs. RPGs and JRPGs. I love open world adventure games, even some shooters, but this one was particularly intimidating for me. <laughs> Once I looked into it more, I heard that it's the video game version of the tabletop game Dungeons and Dragons, which I also know is a huge, huge thing, but I know nothing about it. <laughs> I really just went on about my life, <laughs> not looking into it even after hearing that it won Game of the Year last year at the Game Awards. It wasn't until seeing gameplays from the actual voice actors of Baldur's Gate 3 that got me more and more interested and curious and the rest, as they say, is history. I would jump into their streams or their gameplay episodes completely with zero context still of what the game is about, but what pulled me in the most is you can really tell how much love they have for their own characters and their co-stars and the game itself. And so from that I went off on a whim to just pick it up for myself around the holidays and oh my goodness, one of the best decisions I've ever made. If you love video games. Baldur's Gate 3 pretty much puts together so many of the things that I love in so many different genres and puts it all together into a beautiful little package or huge package. It has everything I could ask for. Endless possibilities. It's just 
that good and you can play this game however you want. So for those who may be wondering if this game really is cozy, there is an easy mode that you can play if you just want to focus on the story. But it's cozy to me just like Tears of the Kingdom, for example, is cozy to me because you do have all the freedom to play it however you want. Of course, there are some battles and some challenging points as well, but for me, a little challenge never hurts. But what makes this game extra special and stand out for me at least is that you can throw almost whatever you want at it and there will be some kind of answer. Every action or piece of dialogue has consequences consequences. You can either be in everyone's good graces or succumb to your dark urges. And depending on who you become, that also affects how others react to you, whether it's the people in the world or your party members, whom you can also romance depending on how naughty or nice you are. Your romance options might change. Someone who favors the good may not be so agreeable whenever you steal or you hurt someone <laughs> but there's someone else in your party who's a bit of a bad influence and may influence you more toward those darker urges <laughs> and speaking of your party the voice actors have just done such a magnificent job making these characters come to life and making them feel real it adds to the story and to the immersion and every playthrough that you do can lead to a much different experience than the one before it. There are so many different outcomes, so many different endings, so many consequences to even the littlest actions that it does make you want to keep coming back for more. I know that I'm not doing this game justice, but again, just extremely cozy for me. It's a new comfort game for sure. One I know for a fact will remain one of my all-time favorites for a very, very long time. And I wouldn't have known if if I didn't step out of my comfort zone and play a completely new title. I think among all of the games that I mentioned in this list, this was the one that really helped me out of that gaming slump or burnout because in many ways it brings together a lot of the other prompts or tips that I mentioned. It reminds me a lot of my old favorites while being something totally new. And because of that freedom of being able to play it however you want, that means I can enter this game and play it just doing repetitive tasks and not having to think about it too much or figure out different ways to tackle a situation and predict the outcome sort of like a puzzle and of course it takes place in such a gorgeous expansive and immersive world as well that i can lose myself in i know i've only scratched the surface and the more playthroughs that i do of baldur's gate 3 i will keep discovering more unfortunately for me i don't know anyone who plays baldur's gate 3 but you can also, do a multiplayer campaign with your friends and I think that'll bring about a different level of chaos and fun. A few minutes in this video just simply is not enough to talk about this masterpiece of a game. But hopefully this inspires you to check out not necessarily Baldur's Gate 3 but find something that gets you excited about it just like it made me excited and made me fall in love with gaming all over again. And with that, I'll leave you with a gentle reminder. If these tips or games aren't quite for you, know that it's also okay to just be in a slump for a while and let it run its course. You'll know when you're ready. You're not missing out on anything by taking a step back and listening to your body and your mind. So don't feel too guilty if you're not playing games that everyone else is playing. All these new games and your favorite worlds and characters will all be waiting for you when you're ready. So take your time. I'm reminded by all of this that the greater joy comes from just playing games that brings you happiness. This might seem like an obvious thing, but clearly even I can forget it sometimes. If you made it to the end, I appreciate you. Thank you so much for watching. Be kind to yourselves and I will see you next time.